one big thing that people don't understand about movement, and I almost want to say we don't have balance, we have counterbalance, because anything has a counter. However, where we're different is that we're living organisms. Let's say, my, again, my vertebrae are here, right? No matter what movement I do, whether it's from my hand, right, the counter that's there, or it's from even my vision, right? Even if you didn't think anything was moving, if my eyes are going back and forth, right, there'll be movement here. If you had a slow-mo camera, I can totally show you. So when I feel a back that feels more like this, and I'm not feeling that counter, when I do this, right? Water is inanimate in that sense because it'll always find the horizon. There's there's not just counterbalance to gravity. There's counter of opposing gravity. So again, when I'm up in space, right? This is one of the things I look at. I'm seeing the hair is just here. There's no counterbalance, right? And it's really important on our nervous system. When you're putting someone in a position, whether it's your son that you're working on or whether it's an astronaut, when they're in a situation where counterbalance is not an essential thing within their bodies, right? So an astronaut just squeezes, you know, and eats like that, right? But their hair is all like, you know, the same. Even when they push off something, right? There's not even push-pull milestones of the hair in outer space. And that's just, you know, if I went like this in outer space and pushed my hair against the wall, it would shoot me against the can. That's how little movement efforts are in, but also responses to movement. And so that's what I want you to think about with the counterbalance. So it's not a muscular thing, but it can be a muscular thing. It's not a red blood cell, blood cell thing, but it can be. You know what I mean? If you, again, where I talk about the viscosity rate changes in diabetes, and that was another live that I just had this past week or, or, or right at the end of last week, um, you know, the difference between having a 500 blood count, uh, 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 sugar count versus a 120, you know, or versus an 80, your viscosity rate changes in the fluid dynamics within your weight differentials are going to be completely different as far as your nervous system is concerned. So again, when you're dealing with a child with CP, which has a, even though they're fragile and they quote have osteoporosis, they still have a different bone density than you or I have when we can do these kind of movements, you know, and just play with space and things that I do, like I said, with my hands and I'm so used to that. But again, see, I'm going in and out of all of this. My water will never do that. So even though I'm going in and out, the water is reflecting primitive counterbalances, right? But but again, when I'm here, right, the way I can do this. Now, if I cross my eyes, <laughs> right, you, you can see again, the just responses of counter are, are impaired. Now, do I still have good hand work even with cross-eyed? Well, yeah, but there's still a difference. But when you're dealing with a system that can't overcompensate, when you're dealing with a system that doesn't know to overcompensate, when you're dealing with a system that, that doesn't even know that the movement exists of this with or without cross-eyed or crenched finger and those kind of things, you will start to see these kind of equations that to me are just very mathematical and I can feel these when I work on you, start to interact with, with their body and organization. So if I go to do this, and this, and, and I have a bit of the esotropia and even hypertropia where I have an alignment issue, I just blows my brains out that, uh, that people go, well, that doesn't affect movement. I'm like, what? Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Again, if it gets posted, I'm here. Bye.